Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. The biggest beneficiary of the post covid world has been the brokerage and asset management industry. Stock market participation in India has skyrocketed and millions of people have started their investing journey. In the same way, the interest of freshly qualified professionals to become equity research analysts has also increased significantly. So, as a continuation to my series where I interview professionals from different industries who share their experience with us, I would like to welcome C. A. Jinesh Sukhya. He has been working at Haithong Securities, which is one of the leading capital market companies. Welcome to H. J. Invest, Jinesh. Can you share with us how exactly did you develop a liking towards this field? What made you choose equity research as the first job profile of your career? Yeah. So hi, Harsh. Thanks for having me on your channel. So yeah, basically, um, you know, my articleship. Uh, I was I had the opportunity to explore a lot of fields in my articleship, including audit, taxation, uh, some part of international taxation, then some part of transfer pricing as well. And I, I, you know, I came to know that I don't want to pursue hardcore CA fields as a career option. So I started to read more and more about other career options, including businesses. and one of the things which intrigued me the most were businesses in general businesses so and also i was into uh, stock market as well at the time uh, i used to do value investing basically and uh, one of the stocks i invested in had become seven times within a period of 3 to 4 years so all these things combined i developed a liking for finance as well as businesses in general and hence i started to look out for career options that included all of this all of this so three four intriguing fields came out few uh, to name a few they were private equity venture capitalists investment banking and in public market were uh, on equity side it was uh, equity research and in debt market it was uh, some credit analyst role or credit manager roles so yeah and uh, personally i never had much interest in debt market hence i chose uh, uh, the closest one that is uh, equity research i also gave a few uh, pe and vc rounds however uh, i mean interviews however the thing is the being a ca it is very difficult it is not impossible but it is difficult to get into pe and vc as your first job just after qualifying as a ca and uh, one of the interviews which i gave for pe and vc i got rejected just because i didn't have i mean the uh, opposition contender he was uh, a graduate from i am ahmedabad and uh, yeah so after that i stopped giving uh, those interviews and then i pivoted towards equity research and i gave, i had applied to almost 30 odd companies and uh, all mostly all were reference based out of and i just got calls from 3 to 4 companies out of these and uh, yeah i one of the interviews which i gave it, it that was also through a reference only it materialized and yeah i ended up a job in equity research so uh, just a follow up you mentioned that you were into value investing so was your uh, participation in the stock markets limited to investing or did you try your hands on trading as well no definitely i tried my hands on trading as well still i am looking towards opportunity to do so however uh, you know at that young age i didn't have enough capital also i was scared to lose capital which uh, many people around me did at the time and yeah so i thought that value investing would be the best thing to do currently and learning that was the best thing to do probably yeah so i chose equity research as a field uh also you mentioned that most of your uh, interview call ups were from companies where you had a reference so from a ca freshers perspective how important do you think is a reference for getting an interview call up so this is a very close field per se if you see uh, jobs in auditing taxation 
uh, you can get into it without reference also being a ca as you have already proved yourself in articleship with exposure into those varied fields however being a fresher in this field and this being a very close field the vacancies so the number of people in this field uh, say there are 100 people only for example vacancies that arise are two or three hardly and whenever they arise they get filled internally only as there are a lot of people trying to apply for this job but the openings are just so much right so that is why reference is uh, you know a very important factor i think in this field and without reference if you apply yes definitely you can get without reference also there is no um, you know restriction but reference is something which is preferred since it's a close field uh okay all right uh, so my next question is uh, cracking interviews of companies involved in the capital markets would be really difficult considering how close the field this is and uh, how few call ups uh, how very few call ups are given to candidates who apply for these jobs so can you guide us through your interview process and the kind of questions that you were asked so um in uh, in the inter in the company which i currently am i was interviewed at uh, mainly at two levels one was first was hr round which went well so those were basic hr questions which any company asks and uh, then uh, you know um, for then uh, the second one was uh, regarding the hardcore uh, equity research part so i i was asked that whether i had invested or uh, created a report for any company per se and uh, i knew that such interviews required uh, reports to be made i mean they would ask me that have you uh, made any report or no so i had made a report for the company i had invested in uh, years back which i just mentioned uh, got seven times uh, i had prepared a report for it it's uh, uh, and i also submitted the report to him he uh, this is my report which i had made It, uh, I mean, obviously, it was uh, without any work ex, hence it was not very much a professional report. However, I uh, it had the gist of a business, its financials, and uh, yeah, I was asked questions about the company, its moat, basically what it did, then how the company differentiated itself from its competitors. Also, um, I was asked. a uh, uh, few uh, fundamental questions regarding finance like what is roe roc then what exactly do you mean by cost of capital or cost of equity and uh, yeah i i was also asked about um company's financials and if i had any uh, budgeted uh, forecasts about the company's revenue and its um balance sheet however at the time i i didn't know much about it i mean how to do forecasts basically so i didn't have any forecasts made uh, but yeah at the end i was asked this one question that um, how do you see this stock playing out and why so basically you you got to have uh, a reason you have invested in that stock and it should be very strong because in stock market any stock you pick up there would be competitors to their business legs some businesses are monopolistic no doubt however most of the businesses have competition in it so you need to have an idea not just of the business you are investing in also about the about its competitors basically so yeah this this was an overview of the questions that were asked in the interview so uh, you mentioned the term uh, moat so what exactly do you mean mean by a moat so i think it would be quite important while analyzing a company considering that was a part that you specifically focused on in your report yeah yeah definitely so moat basically means what the company is doing which is giving it an edge over its competitors and also what it is i mean uh, yeah so basically a uh, moat means that only that what the company is doing right and in a nutshell how it is doing it to differentiate itself from the competitors basically the differentiating factor which gives it an edge over its competitor is which is its moat 
also during the interview i forgot to mention this that they also asked how you arrive at these uh, you know knowledge points data points for example i had mentioned about industry i had mentioned about global industry then indian industry then what companies business segments are so all these things you get from companies annual reports the conference calls which companies do on a quarterly basis and also from the uh, annual general meetings which the company holds basically from all these data points you have to collate them and a report is formed so uh, do you think someone who wants to get into equity research uh, they should try their hands on making an equity report so that it could give an edge to them over uh, other candidates who are trying to get into this field yeah yeah definitely so uh, i think almost everyone who is applying for this job so they are they're not just cs right they are people from different fields some can be from pharma uh, you know they are they can be from science field as well and then they did their mba in finance so these people are also applying for the jobs and they already know a lot about financial modeling as well as these reports then a fresher chartered accountant does in general so it is very diff- uh, important to make these reports also what happens is when you make this report you self you start to self realize whether this is what you actually want to do you know because uh, many people say that equity research in general becomes uh, you know boring at at times because you just have to read things and then write read and write and analyze right so yeah by making report is very important not just for interview process yes i mean and for interview it will definitely help you out 100% but uh, you know for self realizing uh, realizing as well it's important okay uh, so my next question is uh, how is a typical day in the life of an equity analyst so uh, if someone wants to uh, maybe become an equity analyst then they should have an idea about what kind of work they can expect during their uh, job days so as a fresher when you join in this field um most of your time i mean i would say around uh well, this is this has been my personal experience uh, per se that um 50 to 60 60% of it goes into um you know data crunching and number crunching work which is basically preparing financial models then get collating a lot of data points uh, global as well as indian markets Uh, and by markets i mean to say the business markets not the stock market then it revolves around making reports when so uh, so to structure this question um i would like to answer it in two ways one is the result season which is the quarterly earning seasons which companies have and the second is off season work so most of the result season goes into listening to the conference calls which companies held their result schedules which companies have then number punching comes into picture as the companies publish their results you need to punch those numbers in your models after that you need to attend the company's conference call what the outlook companies is giving then you, you need to finalize your model and finally comes report making on that um company particular company which just uh, disclose their results so all this is done in a day after a company uh, announces its results so this was uh, about the result season work and off season what we generally do is mainly it around revolves around uh, data crunching work which is making a financial models of various companies then it involves um, monthly or weekly data points which is the government of india or any global government um, you know gives online then it involves uh, initiating coverage on companies you know uh, which is uh, basically so let's say i have uh, around 12 to 15 companies in my coverage for example and then obviously i would want to increase that coverage right um, so let's say i am into uh, bfsi sector for example so in bfsi there are various stocks however i am covering only 10 to 12 so obviously i need to increase my coverage so to work on it is called initiating coverage on a company and uh, yeah so in off season basically initiating coverages then yeah also um, client client servicing is done in off season client servicing also uh, comes during uh, the season as well 
but yeah uh, in off season also client servicing is done basically cli- our clients are uh, buy side people so i am from sell side equity research and our clients will be buy side equity research which take a holistic view from all sectors analysts so yeah servicing those clients um, giving them financial models providing providing them the data our views on particular stocks all those things so i have a few questions on uh, the points that you mentioned uh, could you brief us about uh, what exactly is the purpose of this financial model and what exactly uh, so why exactly do you punch in the numbers from the ready made financials that the companies provide into a financial model that is my first question uh, the second one that i have is uh, could you uh, tell us what exactly happens in a con call because that is something that you have mentioned multiple times so uh, i would like the audience to know what a con call is uh, i will uh, give my follow up questions later uh, firstly we'll go with these two questions yeah so basically companies give their financials right i mean uh, take an annual report for example or take their quarterly results so what you will see is there would be a trend which they give definitely which would be a qoq basis trend which is quarter on quarter basis or a year on year basis trend right they don't give you data of past 20 quarters together in that and when we look at data as analysts we need data of past 10 to 20 quarters bare minimum to look at how the company has been progressing you know and uh, when we so to um, brief you up for example let's say a company has been doing extreme had uh, many uh, companies in general did extremely well just after covid so now if i give you the financials of a company say as on april uh, april uh, so quarter 1 of fy22 and the companies so they are obliged to give you the f- comparative figures on a qoq basis and on a yoy basis so if you see on a yoy basis you will see a big jump when it comes to q1 fy22 versus q1 fy21 due to covid now this does not show a clear picture of the company's financials right because there was an incident that came in between which was covid so what we do is so this is so this is just to give an example covid is not the reason we prepare uh, uh, uh many quarters financials but just to understand how company works how its margins are working and then to prepare its forecast so basically financial modeling is nothing but so there is a story for each company right growth story which the company share that we'll be growing uh, two times three times or 10 times over a period of 5 to 7 years so all this has to all this is seen in numerical terms in stock market right yeah so basically what happens is this um, the story which the company has to say it has to be backed by strong numbers also right and i would like to sync the two questions which you gave and answer it together and mention that in a con call company presents its historical results first of all how it performed the reason for its bad or good performance what the company's future prospects are regarding capex regarding you know um, some achievement which company had in the previous quarter all these things the company saying but it also has to have a numerical um, you know or sheet a numerical sheet which shows all these things right and for that there is a thing called financial model uh, thank you that was a very good explanation uh, and uh, you also mentioned that you keep an eye on the keep an eye on the weekly data points that are provided by government agencies uh, so can you just tell us what kind of data points are these and uh, what is the usage for an equity analyst and lastly what is the difference between buy side and uh, sell side yeah so um not just weekly i would say um, various there are various data points which the government agencies across the world they publish it it's not compulsory that it has to be weekly it can be monthly weekly quarterly uh, even you know um biannually or annually so one of the examples is of uh, the un database and the world bank database it consists of a lot of data points like employment then manufacturing data in general how the manufacturing sector in various countries have been doing 
then other data points would be export import data of various countries that is being published yeah so these were a few data points to name and i'm sorry i i forgot your second question which you mentioned can you please repeat what is the difference between uh, buy side and sell side equity research yeah so basically what happens is buy sides are basically the fund managers so let's say you have a 1000 crore i mean a um, a company has 1000 crores to invest in fund managers are the one who take care of those 1000 crores where to invest it's um, the returns the potential returns which can be made from stock market and to do that they take um, help of sell side analysts mainly sell side analysts are the one who analyze the companies from the ground level they do a lot of field work and uh, yeah so this is the primary difference and sell sides don't manage fund the sell side analysts the buy side analysts are the one who manage the funds and buy side anal analysis involves a holistic view of the stock market so in sell side it is very much sector specific so let's say if you are into material sector or bfsi sector then you stick to that particular sector whereas in buy side that's not the case you have to be aware about all the sectors what's happening to be aware and uh, you know be able to grab the opportunities that come in uh, okay fine that uh, that clears up the confusion that a lot of people have about buy side and sell side so uh, the next question that i have is how is the work pressure in this field because uh, in today's times, a lot of people look for work, for work life balance. They want to enjoy their personal lives as well, along with their professional life. So can you just give a brief about what kind of work life can someone expect? Yeah, so work wise, season times are pretty hectic because it all depends when the company is announcing their results and when they are scheduling the conference calls and, you know, the work of getting out a, I mean, you know, publishing a report all depends on company's timings. So yeah, season time is pretty much hectic because, you know, in some, during some, uh, some days, com two or three companies or even four to five companies will have a con call on one particular day. So, you know, to listen to, and one con call consists, uh, you know, one con call lasts around one hour minimum, one hour, one hour to 15 minutes, right? And to attend three to four such calls and, you know, make sense out of it at the same time, create financial models. All this is very hectic and hence season times are pretty hectic. However, when it comes to off season, it is uh, very, it is chilled per se. Work hours are not that bad. And, but yeah, at the end of the day, it depends on which company you join. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, that only matters that which company you join and what are your priorities. Uh, okay, so I think that the questions that we have covered until now uh, more or less gives a very good brief about this profile. My last question would be uh, that this video is going to help out a lot of newly qualified professionals or people who are looking for a switch to equity research. I hope. So do you have any message for them? Yeah, I mean... Um... So, yeah, one important thing which I would like to address is currently there is a lot of buzz, you know, going on regarding finance as a field and uh, equity research, investment banking, private equity, venture capital, all this seems a little, you know, um, glamorous from the outside. But at the same time, you need to understand that um, don't get carried away by this, um, by these buzzwords that are going around regarding PVC startups, for example. Because Shark Tank, they ke people <laughs> have decided ki abhi to business hi karenge. But so it, it, it's it's about um, you know priorities. What you want to do? There is nothing wrong in auditing and taxation as well. You know, because um, it all depends on what you want to do in life, right? You should not be um, carried. You should not get carried away just because that is the trend that is going on currently. That people are joining finance. Oh, you don't have to join. No, don't get into a rat race. Spend some time with yourself. Try to figure out what you want to do and then decide. That was great advice, Jinesh. And thanks a lot for giving us your time. This was a really insightful discussion. And I hope that a lot of people will be helped by this video. Yeah, I, I hope too.
thanks a lot harsh for having me and yeah lastly one thing i would like to mention that you know how much ever time you spend in this field it is always going to be less because there is a lot to learn in this field yeah that 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 was about it i think so uh, if anyone uh, has any doubts they, uh, feel free to mention them in the comment section uh, i will make sure that dinesh reads each one of them and yeah. gives a gives a elaborate response i'm going to keep an eye on him sure. yeah so sure. <laughs> so yeah thanks a lot for for joining again uh, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to aj invests for more such interesting conversations thank you